him said the children are too small and people could have hear me if you lack what you know what story if you lack off everything on the board if you come on if you come out just my earphone can nobody hear me when me i make nice if everything is turned off fine at the headboard you cannot hear me because i scream till thy kingdom come nobody cannot hear I may have two sons, I may teach them well. Bless up, Junior. I'm not, I'm not I will not tell a lie for nobody's children. So, just thanks, y'all, for you know. No, no, yeah, it's man, the same. Bless you, lady. Yeah. Bless you, lady. Bless you. Dangerous. Yeah, muscle, I want to share. And whilst I want to share, um, I could say um, something along those lines happened to me, but I was old enough to save myself. So when I was a youngster, I was um, unruly, to say the least, and getting in a lot of bad trouble and mixing with the wrong company and so forth and so on. And my mother had put me out of the house. So I spent some time with my grandfather and, and back home and then came back to London. And um, I slept in a pastor's house. And I was there for a couple of nights. And I couldn't sleep well, so I said, Chow, one night, I go try and see if we can drink a tea and sleep. And um, I woke up with the guy almost on top of me. So the man strip off him thing and ready to do something to me. And I don't know, like the father wake me up. So he was a man that was about six foot three, I don't know, 210 pound, massive geezer. But me just get the strength to take him and fling him. I'm mean, a boss, I'll lift the veers pan him head. But what I wanted to share with you, that, that shame, it turned me even... It turned me into a bad person for a time. Same with me, you know. Same with yeah. me. Well, I turned violent, some... you know, dog. I turned yeah. violent, but yeah, like, become a menace. It made me do some yeah, dangerous things. It's not because I get the name. It made me do some dangerous things. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it, it turned me. And, um, you know, you guys, you said you had comfort songs, but my comfort song was Shabba Rankin. I love all of the gun, them. Don't make them shine. When I heard that, that made me at peace with myself because that's what I went to. I went to find the guy. I lock my gun, I go kill him. So you see, anytime I got angry with someone, I had that killing mentality until I really faced the brother. And, you know, I sat down with him one day and I couldn't even talk about it. You know what I did? I got up and moved the chair from the table I was sitting at and I said to him, you know what? John will start. I'm going to pray for you. Because you see, if I did start, I know I would have killed him there and then. I was about 17. That happened when I was about 13, 14, till I was about 17 and I met up with him again. And he remember, he's a pastor in a church, you know. And I met up with him because my mother is a reverend and my father is a pastor. So I met up, I met up with him in a church, you know, and we managed to go back in the back of the church and have a meeting. But me just get up, I said, I couldn't talk to him. You know, I just said, God bless him. I couldn't talk to him. You see what I mean? I said, so, well, she, what I'm saying is you did very well because it turned me and it never actually happened to me. It almost happened. And it really turned me. But you obviously had a calling on your life because look at the greatness that you've achieved. And I'm... What I want to say, if you look at people like Wushi Fire, like yourself, who are, um, you know, very known, I think it, it's almost a blessing in disguise with a disappointment. So I don't know. I'm, I don't know if, how I can say this, but it's like these things happen to make you who you are now. Uh, you know, I hope you're taking that the right way. And I'm very, very proud of you. And, it, you know, to hear you come in and talk like that. You know, you brought tears to my eyes and I'm a grown man. I've seen some very, very horrible things. But I don't think I've heard anything as bad as what you just said. So I salute you. I want to say respect and honour to what I just witnessed here today, my brother. You know, and you know, I've been trying to reach out to talk about music and all those things, but nothing moved me like what you said today, brother. That's what I want to say to you. You see what I mean? I said to you. Yeah, you understand respect, what I mean? That, that, that is great. I managed to escape, but you talking about it brought it back to me. I mean, I tell you, brother, to, to know what you went through is horrible. You understand what I said to you? So salute. Honor, respect, manners, and I don't even know. I can't put words to it, but words can't describe all, 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 all my feet. You see what I'm saying to you? So, yeah, honor man. and respect, bro. Nothing Yo, much respect, respect man. Much yeah, looking. Nothing, yeah, nothing. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Real way, man. Real way, my brother. Real way. Most, sir. Yeah? Bless you. Really? Respect. Yeah, man. Yeah. Up for, man. Honestly. Up for, brother. Yeah, man. I just, I just want the people, yeah, man. I just want the people in for no say, yo, I really appreciate that something in Africa. First, I really, uh, first, I really, I say anything, you know. Yeah. But what, what I really want to say to everybody is, yo, you see the community where we live in, we just don't talk, you know. And right now, 
Yo, right now, somebody knows something about something, you know. Somebody knows something about somebody. And somebody knows something that's going to help somebody if they just speak, if they just talk. And it's time for us to talk, man. It's time for us to talk, bro. It's time for us to talk, man. DMX did inspire this conversation. 100%. Because I, I refuse to believe that the people around him didn't do every single thing they could to make sure he was not using drugs. But when he dies, I know they're probably right now saying to themselves, I didn't do enough. And I don't want another person to die and everybody say, yo, we didn't do enough. I don't want one more person to get abused. I don't want one more person to commit suicide. I don't want one more person to join a gang and decide that he needs to group up with other little boys because he's scared. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, Trust man. Me. I just want to. I just want to say I appreciate, man, that this conversation is even happening, man. That's real mm -hmm. talk, man. No, for sure, because again, if we don't acknowledge what made us who we are today, we're just going to continue down a path that eventually is going to lead to some form of disruption, destruction, and we'll take a lot of people with us also. Yo, wow. Muscle, real quick, man. You see that guy that just posted, man, Javon? I am Javon, man. Do me a favor and bring him in here, man. Surprisingly enough, man, he's one of the first people I've opened up to in a long time, and I know him as DJ Eclipse. You know what I'm saying? But the brother has made... The brother has... can't find him. Him just type him a minute ago. Um, but the brother has made such an impactful, um, uh, such a, has, made, has made such an impact on my life in such a short, short, short time, man, mm -hmm. um, that I only can imagine when this brother gets on this live, the inspiration he's going to bring forward. He's from What's Antique. I am, ja I am Javon Glasgow. Hold on there. I am Javon Okay, I see here. Yeah. Motivational speaker and coach. I just sent the request. Yo, when I tell you, bro, he's not to be fucked with, man. But again, man, on, man, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 a blessing and I, and I wanna say give thanks to everybody, regardless of mm -hmm. if you can speak well or not. You know what I'm saying? You hear. Mm -hmm. Well my brother, big up, man. How are you? Blessings, King. Blessings. Yeah, I was man. literally I was literally just grabbing some dinner and then I picked up my phone really quick and I saw you alive. And I said, let me just check this conversation out. And I jumped on board and I've been just like sitting here just like in awe of just the, 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 the boldness, the bravery, the atmosphere that has been created just on this live for freedom, man. Um, dude, it's so, it's so powerful. Um, the line that says, um, the truth shall set you free, right? Um, as I'm hearing these stories and I'm hearing you open up and share too, I don't even think you understand the waves and the magnitude of what's happening even on this on this platform right now. Um, I've, I've learned in my own life and I just want to help to give somebody some perspective today, if that's cool. Um, really and truly in our lives, man, our pain is for the pain of others. Our pain is for the pain of others. And that's what we have to remember sometimes is that the things that we go through become scars in our lives. And sometimes we have to show our scars to other people who are scarred for mutual healing to occur. And we talk so much about shame today. And, and what I realized, it doesn't, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just a shame thing. There's something called self-punishment. Um, and we don't talk about that a lot. Self-punishment happens when we regurgitate our regrets, right? But it doesn't start at self-punishment, it starts at guilt. Guilt says I did something wrong or something wrong was done to me. And then from guilt, it goes to shame. Shame says, because I did something wrong or because something wrong happened, then that means I am something wrong. And then from there, it goes to punishment. Because of what I did and because of who I am, then I deserve to be where I'm at or I should accept where I'm at. And so we walk around and we perpetuate this cycle of punishment, not just for ourselves, but for a generation. This is a generational conversation.
a lot of what has happened before us um, was really just passed down from the generation before them. And I think what's happening right now, this level of awareness and opening these conversations and being authentic and real is saying, man, we've been silent too long and our silence is actually passing itself on to, to other generations, you know? And so this platform, this conversation, what's happening right here, man, this is so liberating. Um, I've personally never had to experience a lot of what is, is said here, but that's the difference between empathy and sympathy. Uh, we have a lot of sympathetic people in the world. Sympathy is seeing somebody drown in a body of water and calling somebody to go get them. Any decent human being would do that. Empathy is seeing the same situation and choosing to dive in to save that person. Something powerful happens when we, when we live an empathetic life is because we both become submerged in the same thing, and that's when mutual transformation occurs. So as I'm sitting here listening to all these stories, man, I'm just putting myself in that situation. I'm putting myself in that moment, and I'm trying to at least feel like, like what, what, like the lady that was just sharing, she says so many things in her life happened after that, and everybody blamed it as her having an attitude, her just being nasty or whatever, and not knowing the root cause. I, I just pray that, that as a world, before we get to judging people, we really sit back and we really understand that people are going through things that we, we, we can't even fathom sometimes. And when we become empathetic, um, powerful things happen, man. So what's happening on this platform? And you know, the, the speech I gave last was on guilt and shame. So this is just, this is right up my alley too, of just the space I've been in. So I just salute you guys for having this conversation, man. It's powerful. Yeah, man. I, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, the conversation is sparked, obviously, by um by DMX, yeah, uh, passing, and then uh, me and Muscle began to uh, talk about how we have so many things in the black community that we do not address: suicide, mental health, um, molestation, um, uh, you know, all the things that we we absolutely see happening and absolutely do not talk about, mm. and, and and breaking that. You know what I'm saying? I I I I I bring forward somebody like you, um, because we've had this conversation uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, but I would love for you to just speak on that silence that we've been going through, and the importance of speaking on uh, what yeah. is on what is happening to you, or what is happening to people around you that you are seeing. Yeah. So many so many layers to this idea of not continuing to walk through life um, holding things in. You know, we, we are, even when we think about this idea of healing, we talk about healing and most people focus on healing after they've been broken. But you don't heal brokenness, you repair brokenness. You heal hurt. And so healing is a proactive measure so we don't get to brokenness, if that, if that makes sense, right? A lot of times we just take this like, yo, I'll wait until something really happened and then I start focusing on healing. But we get hurt every single day of our lives. And an aspect of healing is expression. Um, th this whole concept that we don't know sometimes how our words are sharing our story, sharing our testimony, man, can create this atmosphere for somebody else to truly experience freedom. As I said, it's not about us. Every single thing that I've been through in my life that I've been able to speak so confidently on, and I don't hide my life behind closed doors, like I'm an open book and saying, listen, at the end of the day, I was a man who was divorced, but now I counsel and coach married couples. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't use the thing that has happened to me as the end of my story, but as the opportunity to now create his story. Like my pain is a platform for more purpose. But that doesn't happen if we roll around in shame. Because if we roll around in shame, what ends up happening is then we resort to isolation. We feel like, man, I can't tell nobody that. I can't really express that. People ain't going to get it. People going to judge me. And the fear of criticism actually keeps us crippled from walking in our calling. Right? But you know what I peep? And I realize people don't even have no right to judge you. Because we all see others through the broken lens of our own pain, our own past, our own experiences. When somebody's judging me, they're looking through the lens of what they've been through. So what they really see when they see me is the brokenness in themselves. 
And we don't think about that sometimes. It's like a glasses. If I have a pair of glasses and I smash them and then I put them back on, everything I look at through these glasses are going to be broken to some degree. And so sometimes we end up changing ourselves because we have been judged by people with broken perspectives. You understand what I'm saying? So we can't get in this idea of being so fearful of criticism that we end up being silent. And what we call solitude is actually isolation. And we stay in this quiet space now where we beat ourselves up with our words. If you want to go deep, the enemy of our soul can only exist in shame and guilt, can exist in truth. You understand? So the, the absence of truth is the presence of evil, period. And when we walk around in our lives not being authentic with what we've been through and where we've been and sit into that space, man, we just perpetuate this cycle over and over again. And then we bring it into our relationships. That's really where the mess is formed. It's like a broken person meets a broken person and they create a broken child. That's the truth of the matter. You ain't going to create broken in, broken ain't going to create whole. That ain't going to happen like that. You know what I'm saying? And then we end up trying to find fulfillment in another person, which is an unrealistic expectation. So half of us are divorced before we even get married. So there's so many depth to it, man, but, but sharing and opening up and, and speaking. And when somebody willing to judge you for opening up and sharing your story, that, take that as an indication that those are people you need to disassociate from your life. Two types of people in this world, people that are going to complement your purpose or compete against your purpose. They can't do both, right? And so we got to be able to decipher. So that's just layers on it, man. I, I just want to encourage anybody, man. And I think this type of environment is allowing people to understand the power in sharing and in opening up. Just like DMX's life, we all have this expiration date. And a eulogy, a legacy, a headstone, it never talks about what you plan to do. It talks about what you did. So the question I always am faced with when I, when I, when I hear either a legend die, a family member die, a stranger die, I'm asking myself at that moment and at the end of their life, what impact did they leave? What, what did they do to really shift the legacy and the generation coming after us? And if it was just self-serving or if you walked around just holding on to this thing that has happened and not used it for purpose, then what good was it? Your pain, if it ends as a pain, it will always keep you in punishment. But if you use your pain for some form of purpose, some form of positive that ultimately can shift everything in your life. Everything I'm doing while she came from pain was birthed from pain. There ain't nothing in my life that I'm doing that's, that lasts. The passion that I speak with, that comes from pain. So when they see me screaming and snapping on the video and they think it's just for views, nah, that's because I'm speaking to myself. They're just a camera listening. You understand what I'm saying? So there's so many, so many layers to that, bro. Yeah, man. Um, real quick, Muscle, if you could also let um, Coach Car Carmina in. Um, Coach Carmina, could you please send something? But yeah, man, um, Eclipse, you know, I, I hope everybody does follow you. Um, I hope everybody does, um, you know, invest in um, people that are like you. Uh, everybody's not fortunate enough to have somebody maybe uh, personally that can speak like you and motivate like you in their lives. But I do believe that following you is a start. You constantly Bless. upload content that I'm inspired by. And um, I would advise everybody to do the same, man. Uh, follow these bro. people, man. Follow, uh, you know, Cyrilla. Follow uh, I am Javon uh, Glasgow. And uh, the next person I'm, I'm going to bring up, um, Coach Carmina. Like, you know, follow these people, man. These are people that inspire me every single day. Bless, bro. Likewise, and, um, man. I, I Likewise. appreciate this conversation, my brother. Big up. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah, Bless, y'all. Bless up. Great conversation. Yeah, man. Great. Yeah. You know, you know, it seems like the funny thing with it, I was just thinking the other day, so we're going to bring this back to DMX. I was just thinking the other day, what if we're here <coughs> to fight to live, but the real glory comes after you die? That's where the real life really happens. It's somewhere else. I don't know what it is because nobody's I'll tell you ever. What, man, I, I, I don't. I don't anything. really think that's um, a bad way to look at it. But I don't really want to. Um, I don't. I don't. Want, I don't want it after. If it comes after as well, that's great. But I want to have a good life now. I want to have sure. the best life now. I want to have the glory now. I want to be able to look at everybody around me. 
and realize that I have defended my community, I've defended my, com my family, and everybody's living in a safe, comfortable, fun, and happy space. And we can have that. We got to talk. For sure. We got to talk, man. Percent. We got to talk. You know what I'm saying? When you see something and you see somebody acting out of order, you know what I'm saying? We need to highlight it. We need to highlight it, man. You know, rest in peace, DMX. I, I, I mean, I, I've watched tons of my friends pass. You guys, I, just, I said it earlier, man. I have like 30 or 40 friends, my older sister, you know, so many people that are past cousins. And a lot of it is a heavy load put on me because some of it, I saw the signs of what was happening early and I didn't say nothing. And I didn't say anything because I didn't want family shame. I didn't want that person to personally feel shame, you know? And here we are in a situation now where we lose people, we lose people, we lose people. And, you know, we got to get out of that, man. Shout out to Brand New Machine, Steve, big up yourself, you know? We can't do that, man. We can't do that. You know, we have to talk up no. We have to talk up no, 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 no. Because we can only reverse this by mm -hmm. through communication, man. Through communication. That's it. We can't remain silent in our communities about molesters. We can't re remain silent in our communities about mental health, about drugs, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. gangs, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. suicide. We have to talk. We have to talk. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of this conversation, every all five of those topics you said doesn't happen in our community, boss. That happens over there. Over there. It happens everywhere else, but right here. But you know, to tell you the truth, it happens probably even happens more here because you know the monster knows nobody's going to do anything about it. Nobody's going to talk. because that's Yeah, and I mean, really every now and then you have, you have moments of jungle justice, you know? But mm -hmm. the truth is, man, enough time we know where I'm going and everybody don't say nothing. Enough time. And I'm guilty. And that's why I'm probably so, you know, the way I am right now is because I'm guilty. and I'm, I'm holding that on me. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to GT Empire. I'm holding that weight on me. I feel like I killed my sister. Because Wait, I, no, I, 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 I as, a, as a young boy, felt like I was, I was against something that I could not stop. And I just went back into my corner and let it happen. And I didn't mention nothing to mom. I didn't mention nothing to nobody. Because I will tell you this much, man. My dad, my dad actually would have killed me. Mm -hmm. If I had said something to my mom, my dad would have killed me. And I remember the day that my sister said, a lot of people, man, I'm so glad I'm having this conversation, man. So one day, my sister did decide to say to me I know you know my sister did say that to me one day now mind you my sister is a crackhead so my sister is the kind of person that you can't really like leave leave your, you leave your goods around because she's going to steal it kind of thing you know or she's you know she's doing her thing so sitting down and talking with her is very difficult and much less, you know, the way she abused alcohol is just very, very, you know. Yeah, but one day, man, you. we did have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, she told me uh, that she was going to tell everybody. And, um, and she told my aunt. She told my aunt Marjorie. And I remember my aunt Marjorie gave me a call. She said, she said, Nikki, tell me, say she call you. I said, I, 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 Nikki, tell me, say, you know, I said, oh, no. That should tell you to sit, 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 and go on, and that you would see what I go on. Um, and my auntie Marge, you know, just being a human, her natural first question was, "Why you never said nothing?" Mm -hmm. And I'm not mad at Auntie Marge for saying that. Mm -hmm. But once I had the conversation with her, and I was like, oh, "Auntie Marge," I said, "Marjorie," I was like eight years old. You know, it's not like, it's not like I even really understood what sex was. You know, I, I don't know what, I just know say me see something, what me should I never see. And me no same thump bar, X amount of thump, because me see what me should not see, and nobody not supposed to know say that did go on and him thump our feet. 
It's her fault. You it's make her fault, and she need to go hold that. I saw me, I look on it as an eight year old. She need to go hold that because she go tell man and go, and our man come out to come tumper. And I I met I made my father go tumper. I mean, know exactly why. Mm -hmm. I mean, never sit down with myself mm -hmm. as a big man and say, yo, I'm going to correct this. But just keep quiet. And it's not till she come to me and say, me, no, see, so you know what I go on. And it's that's what me start say. At first, what she say to me, you know, say, you know what I go on. You know, say, me almost look to her and I say, no, I don't know. It's like she'll come to me and she say, me, no, say so you see me and you know what I want. Because also, I'm going to find a tape. And my father did record it. And I got you some tape. You know? I'm freezing or I'm all right. You're good. I think I was freezing earlier. Oh, okay. I'm a, I, I, I'm 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 said the man's sick, you know. The man's sick. And then also we got you some cassette tape. Now when we got you the cassette tape. Hold on, hold on. My phone just rang and I can't hear you now. Okay, go on. Just lock off the call. It. <coughs> no man, you're good man. I can't I can't hear you. Oh fuck because the because phone call. Phone All right. So I'm here we are going. Right Let me see if you I can hear you there. Okay, log back on. All right, everybody just log back on. Say that again? All right, all right, cool. Yeah man. Welcome to today's live. This 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 was interesting, but it was a very needed conversation amongst, especially amongst men too. You know what I mean? You usually get, you usually have these conversations, women or people by themselves, but you generally don't get these type of conversations amongst men in, in the industry and all of that. We're, we're forever cool. You understand? We're always cool. We're too cool for anything bad to happen. But yo, we live normal lives like everybody else with fucked up shit happens all the time. I mean, whether you're cool or not. You know what I mean? Why do you think you guys see so many people killing the fathers of every single one of them? Yeah, yeah, man. You're fucked up, bro. Yeah, you hear me now? You hear me? Yes, I hear you. I do, I, but I can't hear you. Did you Did you log off? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to log off. And come to the yeah, do that. I'm going to save this live, bro. All right? If you guys are here, I'm going to log off and I'm going to come back in because my phone rang and I...